All right, so here's an exercise that I really like. Um, it's more of a linear algebra exercise, but um, it's sort of a more general flavor of linear algebra because we're talking about dual spaces. And so and it also links into some uh, like more functional analysis type things because a functional is just, well, anyways, here. A functional is just a linear map from a vector space to a field. And the vector space in analysis, um, so here in linear algebra, the vector space um, is typically a finite dimensional vector space, so something like Rn. So you're taking maps from Rn to the underlying space, um, but you can do it for general vector spaces. Um, and in general, vector spaces can be infinite dimensional. And so you have duals in those spaces as well, and things get really cool, and I really enjoy that kind of stuff. Um, and it's also, there's, it also sort of has an algebraic flavor as well. Um, but in any case, let's just go through this exercise that we have here. So note that we let's see here so the dual space isn't really defined here um, it's typically brought up in like an abstract linear algebra course um, but just as a refresher or um, for the first time potentially so this is the set of all maps f or functions from rn to r because rn is a vector space over the field r and so that's why we're mapping into the field R. This is all maps such that F is linear. So all linear maps from Rn to R. So we have this map T, which goes from Rn to the collection of linear maps from Rn to R. And it's defined by you plug in a vector in Rn into T and you get out a function called phi x, which is defined by phi x of y equals the inner product of x and y. Okay, so again, note that um, this thing is this. Let's see here, f is linear. To prove t is one to one, suppose t of x equals t of y. We want to prove that x equals y. So then, phi of x equals phi of y, i.e. So these are two functions, and we're saying that these two functions are equal. And to say that two functions are equal means that if you plug in any value into the two functions, you'll get the same answer. So for every single z in Rn, if you take um, um, phi x of z, you'll get phi y of z. So then what does this tell us? Well, phi x of z is the inner product of x and z, and phi y of So, or equivalently, the inner product of, so phi x of z is inner product of z and of x and z, and that's equal to phi y of z, which is the inner product of y and z. So, for every single integer i between 1 and n, the inner product of x in EI is the same as the inner product of y in EI. But what does this mean? So if you take the inner product, so E the E1 through EN, these are the basic, these are the 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 uh, standard basis elements of Rn. So if you take the inner product of x with EI, 
EI is going to be zero in every index except for the ith index where it's one. And so when you take its inner product with X, you're going to end up with just XI. And similarly, you're going to end up with YI on the right hand side. Thus, x equals y, because xi equals yi for every i, and that's what it means for two vectors to be equal. And so, t is 1 to 1, because we've proven that if tx equals ty, then x equals y, and that's what it means to be 1 to 1. Okay, so we want to prove that it's that t is linear as well. So for linearity, given real numbers alpha and beta and x, y, and z in Rn. Okay, so we want to evaluate t at alpha x plus beta y. And we want to prove that this gives us alpha times t of x plus beta times t of y. That's what it means to be linear. So how do we prove that? Well, we, well that's proving the equality of two functions. And so again, to prove that two functions are the same, the two functions must be equal at every point. So t of alpha x plus beta y gives us a function and we need to plug in a value into that function, so we'll just write z here. So again, this is not alpha x plus beta y, that quantity times z. This is t of alpha x plus beta y is itself a function, and we're plugging in z. So this equals, well, t of x equals uh, phi x. So this is phi alpha x plus beta y evaluated at z. And we know by definition that this is just alpha x plus beta y in our product with z. And so now we can use the linearity of inner products. So then this is going to be alpha times the inner product of x and z plus beta times the inner product of y and z. Because first you can break it up into the inner product of alpha x and z plus the inner product of beta y with z. And then you pull out the alpha and the beta. Okay, so now we're here. And well, the inner product of x and z is phi x of z. And similarly, inner product of y and z is phi y of z. And so then this is alpha times t of x evaluated at z. Here, I should go on to the next line here. Equals alpha times t of x evaluated at the point z plus beta times the function t of y evaluated at the point z. I feel like the hardest point, the hardest part of exercises like this can be notation, especially when you're first getting used to it. Um, but hopefully me explaining it helps. It gets even worse. This is almost making me think of a, a representation theory a little bit. And there it starts to get really messy. So this holds for every single z. And so the map Tax plus By equals alpha tx plus beta ty, which confirms that t is linear. Finally, we must prove that for every single map phi in the dual space R n star, there is a unique x, a unique vector x in R n such that phi is precisely phi x. 
So phi is this arbitrary element of the dual space, and phi x is, as we defined before, the function which you plug in y and you get the inner product of x with y. All right, so basically what we're gonna end up using is basis functions here. So for each integer i between one and n, define xi to be phi of ei. And let x be x1 through xn. So now what we're going to prove is we're going to prove that phi is phi of x. And so if you want to um, sort of given any arbitrary element of the dual space, if you want to figure out what um, point in Rn this corresponds to, what you have to do is you have to evaluate it at every basis element, and then put all those values together into a vector. Okay, so let's prove this. Then if we take phi x of ei, this is uh, the inner product of x and ei, which is just xi, the number, not the vector, I don't know, or inner product, I don't know what I'm doing. But remember, this is phi of ei. All right. Since the collection of uh, vectors ei from i equals 1 to n is a basis of rn and since phi is linear given any z in rn if z is the sum from i equals 1 to n of a i times e i, which is certainly the case because that's what it means for the e i's to be a basis of r n, then phi of z is phi of the sum from i equals 1 to n of a i e i, and then we use a linearity to say that this is um, the sum from i equals 1 to n of ai times phi of ei. But phi of ei is phi x of ei. So this is the sum from i equals 1 to n ai times phi x of ei. And then we can use the linearity of phi x to say that this is phi x of the sum from i equals 1 to n of a i e i. So then this is phi x of z. So phi of z is phi x of z for all z. So thus phi equals phi x. So this confirms that there exists an x such that phi equals phi x. But now we want to confirm uniqueness. And uniqueness should be pretty straightforward because um, this xi, there was only, we had one way to choose xi. Um, because we chose each, we, cho we chose each index of x to be precisely the value phi of ei. And we only had one choice. Phi of ei is just one number. So you have only one choice for each index of x. And so there's only one x that you can get here. But in any case, let's do this um, in a little more detail. Uniqueness. Um, let's suppose phi equals phi x, and it also equals phi y. Then for all i, we have xi, well this is the inner product of x with ei, 
which is phi of x, phi x of ei. But we've proven that this, or we've stated that this, that phi x equals phi y, so this must equal phi y of ei. So this is the inner product of y and ei, which is precisely yi. So xi equals yi for all i, and so x equals y. All right, so that confirms uniqueness, and that finishes the exercise, because we've proven that for each phi in t, there is a unique x in Rn, such that phi equals phi of x. And so what this tells us is that um, the dual space looks a lot like the underlying vector field, or vector space, because we can associate with each, um, we can associate with each function in the dual space a unique um, vector in the vector space, and we can write the function in terms of an inner product with this element of the vector space. And so, yeah, this is a really nice exercise. I really like that they're introducing it now, and they're not introducing this 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 type of thing. I mean, maybe maybe it would have been nice if they did an example with this before showing it as before giving it as an exercise because it can be difficult to use this type of notation at first. Um, but I'm glad that they've at least tried to introduce this because this is really sort of important stuff. Um, but anyways, we're done with the exercise. And yeah, that's it.